Hey guys, Pastor Matt Chandler here. Uh, one of the themes that comes out in The Overcomers over and over and over again is the centrality of God's word to encourage and build up his saints. It's why I love uh, Dwell Bible app. It's an app for listening. Uh, I, I kind of use it in the margins of my day. I like to listen to, depending on my mood, uh, Mark or Felix throw on some ambient music and then in my truck or in my study or uh, in a few minutes between this meeting going into that, soak again in the word of God. Uh, they, they've given us kind of an awesome deal here for a yearly subscription. If you go to dwellbible.com backslash overcomers, they're giving us 25% off an annual subscription. So if you're looking for more Bible in your life, in the margins of your life, not just kind of traditionally listening, but listening while you work, listening while you drive. I couldn't recommend the Dwell Bible app more highly. I wanna mention another one of our sponsors that has made this episode possible. Several years ago, uh, the Village Church was really wrestling through the rising cost of health insurance for our staff and their family. So we began to look for an alternative um, to classic insurance. And we came across Christian Healthcare Ministries. And so for over a decade now, we have partnered with Christian Healthcare Ministries, we just call it CHM, at the Village Church. And we've done so as an alternative to insurance to cover uh, most, if not all, of the major health issues of our staff and their family. So if you're looking for an alternative uh, to high cost insurance, I would commend CHM to you, Christian Healthcare Ministries. You can go to their website at chministries.org or just click the link in the show notes. Well, welcome back to The Overcomers. This is another one of those episodes where we're just going to pause and we're going to talk a little bit about um, what we've just heard and listened to the last couple of weeks. And because uh, really, because this is um, marriage, uh, I thought yeah. the the wonderful Lauren Chandler, or Elsie, as many of us call her, uh, could join us. She'll be a special guest on some yeah. of these. And so excited to have you with me, babe. I'm excited to be here, Let's sweetie. go. Um, so the Youngs and the Durdens, yeah. that, that's their stories are the ones that we're going to kind of talk through today. Yeah. What, what, as you listen to them, what, what stood out either like that you would want to pull out and talk about really in either of those stories or maybe something that was a theme in both? Yeah, I think something that was a theme in both, there was, there was a lot of carryover and I appreciated that the the two different couples as a somewhat different scenario in each where you yeah. had the wife unfaithful, the husband unfaithful, but you see these common themes. And one of the themes that I saw was um, reconciliation with each other can't happen outside of reconciliation with God. Like there can be some kind of restoration, but it's not going to be like that deep soul level reconciliation that I love what Jeff Haley said to Dirty. Josh. Yeah. Where he was like, I mean, sure, you want the house back, you want your family back. I can't guarantee that. But what I can guarantee is you have a God who loves you. And if you confess, he will forgive you and you have reconciliation there. And even in Jill's story where, you know, she found a lot of freedom um, because she was reconciled to God first. Yeah. Um, even through all the shame and um, that she was able to move forward and actually felt so much better when everything came to light. Um, because she was being reconciled to God. She found so much healing yeah. um, that even being exposed and going to recovery, um, that God was healing her, um, that that has to happen before you have any chance of reconciling kind of horizontally. And yeah. I think that's even been true for us. I mean, we didn't have the same kind of story yeah. that they had, but... Um, I think a lot of the healing started for us when, uh, for at least on my part, and my part was getting that reconciliation with God and growing in intimacy with Him um, before I could really 
move forward with you, yeah, you know? For sure. Well, and I think if, if you're walking through this right now, if you're, and I remember Dom saying, you know, before, you know, the first affair, she was like, I, I would never stay with a man who, who cheated on me or, and I, I, I know, Pretty much every man I know thinks there, there's no way I would I, I would put up with that or survive that or you know endure that I'd walk and in in both of those cases um, there was this draw back to the father first there, there was this what what I actually what I actually need um, is to heal in my relationship with the Lord um, and so yeah that that stood out too and. I thought it was I thought it was telling that it, and I'm thinking more about Josh's Josh Durden's story where man I I wanted I wanted I grew up as a little boy I, I wanted the house and the mm-hmm. wife and the kids and it, what he was saying in that moment is really you know he 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 was the child of divorce and was raised by his grandparents and he's he's wanting the story to be different with him but he finds himself in the same old sin patterns and i wonder how often um because we don't have a vision Mm. for loving the lord deeply and then out of loving and being reconciled to jesus out of an overflow of that loving serving engaging with our family we actually become the thing Mm. that um, we never wanted to become and so even in his desire to do things differently josh found himself doing the very things that kind of led to the destruction yep. of maybe his family before he he met and married Dom. And so it it really is, if you're in the middle of this right now, and there's, let, let me just say this, um, I don't think all marriages end in reconciliation. I, I think the Bible gives clear, I mean, very clear permission for divorce around just a couple of things. Uh, but I But I want to say where there's willingness to work and yeah. there's repentance, yeah. e- even repentance that might be drawn out a little bit, like yeah. you see in both cases. I, I would fight. I, it was it, it was Josh that said um, near the end of of that episode that he began to realize that uh, starting over in a new marriage wasn't the easiest thing here, yeah. uh, but rather working through this mess. Would would be and produce the thing that he was really after, and mm. and to know them in this and through this and on the other side of this, that that's absolutely been true. That although not all marriages can be reconciled, yeah. the ones that fight for it and get there, they are a significant weapon in the hands of the Lord yeah. um, against r- really the enemy's attacks on marriages everywhere. Yeah. So, like even if you look at the two stories, yeah. it's Aaron and Jill okay. Jill healing that end up being this catalyst yeah. for Dom and Josh right. who show up at recovery and hear this story. Yeah. And for the first time, we're thinking, oh my gosh, there's hope. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking to you, just that their willingness, that um, Young's willingness to face and to fight for it um, led to hope for the dirt. Yeah. That's so great. One of the one of the ways we're able to bring these stories to you is by partnering with organizations that I've grown to trust and appreciate and love over the last couple of years. Uh, Dwell the Dwell Bible app. If you followed my ministry, you know I've mentioned it before. It's just one of my favorite tools, like in my own devotional life, my own study life, uh, to find more ways um, to hear the Word of God, to absorb the Word of God, to have the Word of God top of mind for me. Uh, and so I've used it devotionally. Uh, I've used it in regards to just, uh, I'm, I'm currently studying the book of Daniel. And so all day today, I've had the the Daniel read by Mark with ambient music in the background playing on my phone in my truck uh, as I you know uh, walked outside a little bit earlier this morning, just finding ways um, to have the Word of God um, absorbing into my system and, and the, the design, the, the beauty of the app, uh, the various kinds of music that can play under, uh, the accents that can go to. There are so many aspects of the app that could serve to stir your affections for Jesus depending on preference and desire. Uh, and so I commend the Dwell Bible Study app to you.
For the last 10 years, um, my family and I have used Christian healthcare ministries, uh, really for almost all of our um, medical bill needs. They are an alternative to traditional healthcare, uh, and they have provided for some significant and major issues for our family. And so if you're like a, a lot of people um, and the cost of health insurance is just overwhelming to you. I, I would encourage you, because I know open enrollment is coming up uh, for most people in most places, to consider Christian Healthcare Ministries. Again, uh, we've been using them for over or right at a decade now. They've covered major surgeries. They've provided for all sorts of needs uh, that we've had in our family, both on the emergency front and the normal everyday front. So I would encourage you to check them out at chministries.org, or you can click the link in the show notes. Um, I think another thing is community. I think that was really key for both of them, where uh, there was a community in in both stories that wasn't helpful, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't pushing them to reconciliation with the Lord or, you know, to at least fight for the marriage. Um, and like you said, there are going to be situations, and I appreciate in Dom's case that there was community who were pushing her towards the Lord, but also were not like, okay, yeah, let them back in. Yeah. Um, it was, okay, we're pushing you to you know reconciliation with Jesus or pushing into Him, um, but also just being wise and yeah. discerning and, and, and waiting and watching for repentance to really play itself out. And Josh, like, is this a worldly sorrow or is this a godly sorrow? And so um, it wasn't it wasn't even just the community was, yeah, get back, fight for the marriage, yeah. let them back in. It was, okay, we care more about your soul That's right. than we do about having a pretty bow tied around That's this. Right. And so Dom, you know, press into Jesus, be discerning and wise uh, with Josh. Josh, fight for this marriage, be slow. Yeah. Understand where Dom's coming from, show godly repentance, and then even you know the youngs coming to the village and being in a place where it was okay to not be okay, yeah. um, to have people around them say, "Hey, um, let's deal with this, and yeah. this is a safe place for you to heal, and this is a place where your identity ha- doesn't have to be in being the perfect pastor's wife or the perfect pastor, but being loved by God." Yeah. And so I think community was really key in both stories. Yeah, and I think community, and you know this, if you're watching any of these episodes of Overcomers, really through the first two seasons, this is the theme where once people are let in, once there's like like a team um, walking alongside of you, a community, then that's where some real magic starts to happen. But I... One of the things that that I would say, because specifically in really actually in both cases, uh, there was community that wasn't helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, it, here's I, I think this is a way one of the ways that you can bulletproof. Uh, your marriage. I think there's a couple of key things. Certainly, um, I think when when this started happening in our marriage. Um, it, it things felt safer and lighter, even though we had a ton of work still to do after yeah. those first seven years. Um, there, there's this in Song of Songs. Um, there's this scene where Solomon and the Shulamite woman they're in a fight, and she, you know, he retreats to his garden or workshop or gym or whatever. Right? He retreats. He's like, oh, I just got rejected by my bride, and it hurt him. And so he doesn't. He doesn't want to fight, so he flees. She pursues him, and as she pursues him, she runs into some of her friends, and she kind of explains the fight, and they, like, dog him. They're like, oh, you're so beautiful. I mean, I can't believe, like, why don't you? There there are so many other princes that would love you better than that, and she rips off this long list of things that are Solomon's strengths. Um, And so one of the things that we pull from that, and one of the things I think you need to find in yourself is is that you need to grow 
to become an expert in the strengths of your spouse, even for all their frailty and faults. And there's no one perfect. So what ends up happening to us if we're not careful is we will be an expert in our spouse's weaknesses and we'll compare those weaknesses to our strengths. And then if you're not careful, you'll have a community that comes around you Mm -hmm. and cheers on your strengths while highlighting your partner's weaknesses. And and this is, man, this is, this will rip you to pieces. It, it will, it will tear the relationship apart. Mm-hmm. And so what I want to do in our marriage is I want to be an expert in all of Lauren's strengths. That, that way, if I'm ever feeling good about myself, I'm comparing my strengths with her strengths, not my strengths with her weaknesses. And and so I, I think where Dom and Aaron in particular, um, th- they were aware and began to grow in an awareness mm. of their partner's strengths yeah. and not just their weaknesses. And that was both healing and protected them yeah. against bad advice from bad community. It actually helped them spot bad community because you just don't want to, like I don't have ears for somebody running down LC to me, even if we're in a big fight. I'm not looking for someone to join my team so I can win. Yeah. I'm looking for... Um, r- really a recognition of the goodness of God in this woman that's been given to me in this covenant. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's a way not only to bulletproof your marriage, but it's certainly a way to help you kind of come out of maybe your spouse's failures or shortcomings. Yeah, and I, I think another way to say it to you, know, you say that so well, like being an expert in their strengths is Pay attention to the story that you're telling yourself about your marriage and about your spouse. It's good. Um, Because the enemy will get in there, and just like he did with Eve in the garden, like, did God really say, well, he really doesn't want you to know all the things. And so just paying attention to the story that you're telling yourself about your spouse or about yourself, like, I'm the one that's always this, this, and this. They're the ones that they all they think about is this. They don't even care, you know. Paying attention to the story that you're telling yourself or that's running through your head. And sometimes it's in your voice and sometimes it is your voice. But sometimes it's the enemy just taking opportunity to kind of hijack your voice, almost like AI, and and make convincing you, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, so um, I think be an expert in their strengths and pay attention to the story that you hear in your head about your spouse and about yourself and about your marriage. Yeah, for sure. I love Mm -hmm. that. Anything else that? Uh, Yeah, I think uh, the last thing was identity. I mean, identity was crucial uh, when I think about the Young's story in particular, where here Aaron was finding a lot of identity in his job, in ministry. And then Jill, she couldn't find her identity. She was struggling. She didn't feel seen. She just wanted someone to see her and appreciate her because her identity felt wrapped up in being Aaron's wife. And I mean, I totally identified with that in their story where that was was probably true early in ministry with me. And and it wasn't even people putting pressure on me. It just was, well, I'm married to Matt Chandler and I'm Matt's wife and our kids are young and I'm at home. And I knew I had things to offer too. And no one was really um, saying, oh no, sacrifice that for Matt's calling. It was just me um, trying to find my identity. And I think um, it's it's a recipe for disaster if you're finding your identity, especially in ministry, in ministry, yeah. or in your spouse's ministry, yeah. or in your vocation if you're not in ministry. Um, and then really having to fight to find your identi- identity in Christ. I think that was a turning point for me in recovery yeah. is— um, yeah, being reconciled to God, but then realizing, okay, my identity is not in what I do and being Matt's wife and being the mother of my children. My identity is in Christ, and He's not only given me an identity that's redeemed by Him that we can read all about being a child of God. He's given me a unique identity. He's given me gifts and a heart for certain things that He wants to glorify Himself through. And that might look different yeah. in different seasons when kids are little or when, you know, you've got a lot going on and I've got to just 
pick up slack at yeah. home, um, but that my identity is firmly planted in Him, whether I'm doing what I feel called to do or not. Yeah. Um, and that I do have things that He's given me to do for certain seasons that I get the joy to do, not because my identity is wrapped in it, uh, but because it's an overflow of of being identified as Christ, as a child of God. And so I think that's something that is important in a marriage is where are you finding your identity and your worth? Is it in a job? Is it in ministry? Is it in what you do? Um, or is it is it truly in Christ? Yeah. And, and identity formation, really, it's like, I don't think Lauren just said anything that you you probably don't already know yeah. that that I need to find my identity in Christ. I am first and foremost a child of the King. I am not a spouse. I am not a parent. I am not my job. I am I am beloved by by the God of the universe. And so uh, maybe at, at the end of this, as we we wrap this up, I, I would just encourage you. It, it's not enough for us to just know in our heads. Yeah. Yeah, my, my identity's in Christ. A lot of times the pain that we're feeling is the check engine light that, man, I, I have not found my identity there. Yeah. I have let something else slip in. Yeah. Uh, and so here's how I would encourage you um, as we wrap this up. One, I would just say, listen, if you if there are a bunch of people in your ear right now that are tearing down your spouse and siding with you i would i would find a community that is, is can lament with you and and can agree with you to a point uh but then pick your eyes back up to king jesus yeah. because really pressing into jesus is going to be far more healing than hyper fixating on and continuing to talk about the weaknesses of your spouse to grow in your expertise of your spouse's strengths. Mm -hmm. And then I would continually pray that the Holy Spirit would remind you and grow you in your understanding of who you actually are, who you belong to, and why that matters. And mm -hmm. so thanks for tuning in yeah. uh, to this shorter episode of The Overcomers. Pray if you're in the thick of it right now that these two stories gave you hope, lifted up your eyes to King Jesus, and are creating in you a desire to keep going. God bless you. Mm -hmm.